Thank you so much, Matisse. And uh, thank you again to, to everyone that's joined us this morning early at this very important time on Earth Overshoot Day. And, and I'm going to pass immediately to Johan Rockström, who's really been my partner in crime in developing this planetary emergency plan, which very much as laid out by yourself and also Pavan and Marco talks about a new deal for people, nature and climate. And what this plan is very much doing is trying to bring in the human dimension, the months that we've gone through now as we move through this COVID period of trying to understand the convergence of the tipping points between a human pandemic or a health pandemic and the climate change, biodiversity loss, shocks that we are in the midst of. So Johan, I'm passing over to you and then I will come back and, and continue the session. Thanks, thanks, Andrin, and uh, hello, everyone. And uh, I, I, to start with, um, this is a really important moment we have now to, uh, you know, try and um, revive the super year 2020 into what now has become the the substitute of that, which is um, the tipping point we need to achieve in 2021 towards a transformation. And let me just lay out the science behind why define a planetary emergency, which then should kick off an emergence plan towards a sustainable, prosperous, and equitable future. Now, there are, there are three elements to this. The first one is, is of course, that we at 1.2 degrees Celsius warming, at uh, the midst of the sixth mass extinction of species on Earth, uh, with the great acceleration of exponential pressures on essentially all parameters that matter for human well-being, we start feeling the indent on humans and, and economies and jobs and equity. And, um, you know, I don't have to spend much time, but I think it is good to just, just remind ourselves, because it feels so long time ago in the midst of the COVID crisis, that Australia had the most unprecedented forest fires ever recorded with devastating catastrophic impacts on humans and biodiversity but also leading to a pulse of 900, 900 million tons of carbon dioxide, which is more than twice the annual emissions of fossil fuel burning in Australia over an entire year. So here you have nature tipping over from being our best friend, being a sink of carbon, to becoming a pulse of carbon. Just very far away from Australia in Siberia, 38 degrees Celsius, was measured this summer, never occurred before, leading to extreme forest fires, permafrost thawing, disease patterns, pulses of carbon. You have the heat waves across the European Union. We have the floods in Bangladesh hitting millions. We have the, the super, uh, you know, configuration of, of multiple factors in Kenya with desert locusts invasions and drought and food riots in the midst of the COVID crisis. These kind of perfect storms that are now no longer, you know, extremes, they are increasingly part of normality. So that's one element of the emergency. But the most important part of the emergency is what you started off with, Matt, is when you said 22nd of August is the day when we have actually consumed the annual productive capacity of the Earth system and we go on credit. Well, you said we can do that. Sure, up to a certain point, but then it crashes. You can go on credit up to a certain point. The latest science, I mean, now I'm talking 48 hours ago, showed again science pointing at the fact that the green and ice sheet may already have crossed a tipping point, that the credit point has already passed, that we are on an irreversible trajectory, potentially on Greenland. We know we are on an irreversible trajectory on the Arctic sea ice, we have also passed a tipping point in the Thwaites Glacier on Antarctica, which means that fundamentally, if I would add all these tipping point risks from the Amazon to the Atlantic overturning of heat to the permafrost thawing, that the red thread of 20 years of scientific advancements is quite frankly, that there's a need for self-critique. We have underestimated the pace of change. We've underestimated the interconnections between the different global commons in the Earth system which means that you can get abrupt, irreversible, and accelerated change. You combine these two factors and we land at the conclusion that we're facing not only high risk, 
but potentially irreversible risk for humanity's possibilities to thrive on Earth. And then comes us the last point behind an emergency. When you think of it, what is it that, that defines an emergency? Well, one is risk, potentially irreversible catastrophic risk. We feel that we have unequivocally defined this. Secondly, is time. You never declare an emergency unless you're running out of time. Well, we have been struggling on this agenda since actually the Limits to Growth report of the Club of Rome in 1972. We have been trying and trying and trying and trying and made some success, but never really got the transformative moment. Now we've entered the decade when we have very strong scientific evidence that we need to cut global emissions by half and halt loss of biodiversity and go circular, restore and regenerate. This is the transformative moment, but it's not transformative moment over generations. It's a transformative moment over 10 years. It's like in a blink of time. So that is what takes us to an emergency point. And, and with all that scientific evidence, that conclusion is of course not isolated. It's not a conclusion to communicate to the world we have an emergency, it's to communicate to the world, let's put all hands on deck and act on the emergence agenda, which forms the plan that we've designed together with, uh, with you, Sandrin, and your team at the Club of Rome. So I'll hand back to you to talk about the positives here. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just con conclude in, at that point. Over Thank to you. you, Johan. Thank you, Johan. It's difficult to talk about the positives clearly when we see the absolute urgency that we're in. But I think that the other clear point that the Club of Rome has been saying for the 50 last years and continues to say through the climate emergency plan that we published two years ago, the planetary emergency plan that we published together a year ago, and now our new version 2.0, which brings in the COVID pandemic as the important human dimension of planetary emergency. And the point here is exactly the point that was made by Mantis, which is that humanity has gone through crises before. This is not a singular crisis. This will be a cycle of crises. And what we need to remind humanity is that yes, by pulling together, creating a sense of solidarity between North and South, between local and national, international governments, working together to ensure that we don't just look at this as one crisis, but the greatest crisis with regard to humanity. This is a man-made, human-made crisis, which we are the only ones that can solve. So that brings us to transformation and emergence. We have learned through COVID and exactly as was said before, that we can actually, some of us, pull together through disaster. But what we need to do now is design our way out. What the planetary emergency plan demonstrates is ways to do that. The immediacy of some of the calls to action that we need in the energy sector, in the materials sector, in the agriculture sector, looking at the nexus of the way in which we use land, water, energy, and air, looking at the nexus of the way as communities we interact between rural communities and urban communities. What COVID has done has brought people back to what is essential. And what our plan tries to demonstrate is that what is essential to humanity is actually access to our essentials, access to healthcare, access to food, water, access to employment, ensuring that we have greater equity and prosperity. We believe at the Club of Rome that there is prosperity without growth. We believe that growth actually is completely outdated, that a well being economy is the economy that we need. And that this planetary emergency plan will enable us to put in place the economic and the financial underpinnings necessary to bring us to a well being economy, an economy that services people, an ecosystem rather than an ego system. In today's world, where we are looking at fake facts, when we are looking at hate mongering by so many of our leaders and a total disrespect for human life, what we are trying to do collectively as a community through the Club of Rome, through the Potsdam Institute, through our network 
of partners, 220 partners, government officials, non-government officials, civil society coming together through the Planetary Emergency Partnership to ensure that we no longer think that we have 50 years to move into action. 